Welcome to my video on Sylvia Plath's The Bee Meeting. This poem was written in 1962 by Sylvia Plath and in that time, in less than a week in fact at that time, she wrote five poems all about bees and she was writing them at the point really where her relationship with Ted Hughes was coming to an end, where her marriage was ending. She really believed in her bee poems. She liked them. She wrote home to her mother to tell her that she believed these were going to be the poems that made her famous. Um, and it's worth really knowing that Platt's father was an authority on bees. He wrote books about them and she obviously studied those books in great depth. She also learned about beekeeping from her midwife um, who, when she was in Devon, delivered her son um, but also taught her to beekeep and she actually took an interest in beekeeping about six months before her death. Let's read the poem and then we'll talk about it in more depth and I'll give you some ideas of the kinds of things that you need to think about. But before you read, it's worth just having a think about your prior knowledge really regarding bees because bees are symbolic. They're used as a symbol in all of the five of her poems about bees and so it would be worth activating your prior knowledge so that you can understand maybe what they're symbolic of. The Bee Meeting Who are these people at the bridge to meet me? They are the villagers, the rector, the midwife, the sexton, the agent for bees. In my sleeveless summery dress I have no protection and they are all gloved and covered. Why did nobody tell me? They are smiling and taking out veils tacked to ancient hats. I am nude as a chicken neck. Does nobody love me? Yes, here is the secretary of bees, with her white shop smock buttoning the cuffs at my wrists and the slit from my neck to my knees. Now I am milkweed silk. The bees will not notice. They will not smell my fear, my fear, my fear. Which is the rector now? Is it that man in black? Which is the midwife? Is that her blue coat? Everybody is nodding a square black head. They are knights in visors, breastplates of cheesecloth knotted under the armpits. Their smiles and their voices are changing. I am led through a bean field. Strips of tin foil winking like people. Feather dusters fanning their hands in a sea of bean flowers. Creamy bean flowers with black eyes and leaves like bored hearts. Is it blood clots? The tendrils are dragging that up that string. No, no, it is scarlet flowers that will one day be edible. Now they are giving me a fashionable white straw Italian hat and a black veil that moulds to my face. They are making me one of them. They are leading me to the shorn grove, the circle of hives. Is it the hawthorn that smells so sick? The barren body of hawthorn etherizing its children. Is it some operation that is taking place? Is it the surgeon my neighbours are waiting for, this apparition in a green helmet, shining gloves and white suit? Is it the butcher, the grocer, the postman, someone I know? I cannot run, I am rooted, and the gorse hurts me with its yellow purses, its spiky armour. I could not run without having to run forever. The white hive is snug as a virgin, sealing off her brood cells, her honey and quietly humming. Smoke rolls, sorry, excuse me, and scarves in the grove. The mind of the hive thinks this is the end of everything. Here they come, the outriders, on their hysterical elastics. If I stand very still, they will think I am cow parsley, a gullible head untouched by their animosity. Not even nodding, a personage in a hedgerow. The village, villagers open the chambers, they are hunting the queen. Is she hiding? Is she eating honey? She's very clever. She's old, old, old. She must live another year and she knows it. While in their finger joint cells, the new virgins dream of a duel they will win inevitably. A curtain of wax dividing them from the bride flight, the upflight of the murderess into a heaven that loves her. The villagers are moving the virgins. There will be no killing. The old queen does not show herself. Is she so ungrateful? I am exhausted. I am exhausted. Pillar of white in a blackout of knives. I am the magician's girl who does not flinch. The villagers are untying their disguise, they are shaking hands. Whose is that long white box in the grove? What have they accomplished? Why am I cold? OK, 
Okay, so you can see now that I've added some annotation to the poem, just some quick annotation, just drawing your attention to some of the things that we need to talk about. But before I go into that, just to be clear, this is a poem that can be read literally or figuratively. If we're going to read it literally, then it is a poem about the speaker's first meeting with a hive of bees. And she views them as a sort of society. She seems to describe their reactions to her and certainly her reaction to them. And she also seems to suggest really her reaction to the people she's involved with in um, meeting these hives and moving the virgins from the queen bee. That seems to be the task that they're undertaking. Of course, the poem can also be read as an allegory or figuratively. Maybe figuratively, it's a description of trying to fit into a society in which the speaker feels like an alien. And around the time that the poem was written, of course, Plath had discovered that Hughes was cheating and therefore her marriage was breaking down. So some um, critics have used that really as a justification for reading it in that way. You can see that I've drawn your attention to the questions in the poem. We're just looking at the first bit of the poem here. There's obviously another slide as well, um, but let's just concentrate on this first half. So there are lots of questions in the poem. The question is, why are there so many questions in the poem? What do they suggest these questions about the reader? What can you infer, not the reader, sorry, the speaker, what can you infer about the speaker through how many questions are being asked and the kinds of questions that she's asking as well? Some critics argue potentially that the questions are an illustration of Plath's concern with her own public image. P uh, possibly you might like to read the poem like that. Does she doubt her talent as a writer? Is that why there are so many questions? Is she just suffering with low self-confidence? Not just Plath, but the speaker, of course. Let's talk about the speaker. And think about the tone that's being established through those questions. You'll notice that I've also highlighted the colours in the poem. Plath loves to use colour imagery. Some of the colours that reappear constantly in her work are white, blue, black and red. And all of those colours make an appearance here in this poem as well. You need to have a think about what do those colours represent. Quite often white represents death, for example, in, Black's, in Plath's poetry. So hue, what is it representative of, for example? Have a think about it. You'll also note that I've drawn your attention to some of the vocabulary that suggests battle of some kind happening and that also suggests some kind of ancient ritual um, in some way. Why is that being incorporated into the poem? Because there is this sense that the rector, the midwife, the sexton, they're all engaged in some kind of ritual. They know how this goes. They understand what's going to happen here. And the speaker is an outsider. She does not understand what's happening. And she feels like she has no protection. She says, doesn't, doesn't she there? I, in my sleeveless summery dress, I have no protection. She is presented as being remarkably different to the gloved, covered, veiled others in the poem who are described as being knights, who are described as a little bit like people who are headed towards a battle. You do need to consider the community in the poem, um, like the people that I've just mentioned, and you need to ask yourself the question, is it a poem about being swayed by the community around you, for example? Does the speaker feel oppressed and betrayed by the community that surrounds her or the, the community in this poem? Or does she feel like she's one of them by the end of the poem? It's also worth noting, really, that the rector, the midwife, the sexton, they all are connected to birth and death. Why could that be, for example? What is Sylvia Plath hoping to explore through that some of the kind of ideas maybe that you find in the poem, the idea of transformation, potentially, potentially the idea of the theme of renewal, jealousy, maybe revenge, maybe fear, isolation, definitely, desiring death, potentially, desiring acceptance, I think certainly, the coming together of nature and humanity and undoubtedly vulnerability. 
I would have a think about all of those ideas and track through where you can see those ideas at work in the poem. If you were able to isolate one quotation, for example, for each of those different ideas, then I think you'd be in quite a good place, really, in terms of your annotation. Just to give you an idea then of some of what the critics say about this poem, first of all, critics have drawn attention to Sylvia Plath or the speaker's passivity in the poem, as if her identity is being imposed on her in some way. So that's something that you need to consider and maybe have a look for in the poem itself. What's more, critics do believe that the poems are about a woman's place in the world, at least in part. So where do you see that in this poem? Certainly that also is, be is a comment that's being made in relation really to the other poems, not just this poem, but the other poems in the B collection. Other critics argue that the poem explores the self and some argue that these poems um, are a way for Plath to try and liberate the female and her body but in doing so she seems to subject the female and that body to an order that dictates its annihilation. In other words she tries to free the woman but actually the woman is not free at the end of the poem. More than that the woman is annihilated. Do you feel like that's true? The B poems also explore power arguably um, the bee communities, of course, are subject to matriarchal power. In other words, they're run by the queen bee, aren't they? Not a male figure. So how does that play in here? And how is that important, maybe, to what Plath is choosing to explore? You do need to have a little think about the development in the poem and just have a look really at the end. Look at the final stanza. I am exhausted. I am exhausted. And you'll note that repetition is used throughout the poem to draw attention to particularly important parts of the poem. Why is the speaker exhausted at the end? And how does that statement and that stanza really add to the development of the poem? How do we understand um, the speaker at the end of the poem given who? final comments as it were she talks about being the magician's girl who does not flinch in other words she's part of the sort of party tricks of the magician and she's expected to just stand there and not do anything in response just look pretty smile get on with it what do we think then plath is saying about womanhood through that kind of imagery and what is the speaker like given that kind of imagery and how is the speaker feeling at the end of the poem given that have a little think about all of those different ideas for me, please. Annotate your poem, highlight things, uh, look up any words that you don't understand, and we'll discuss this in more depth in our class. Thank you.